Good morning, everybody from Orlando, Florida, more specifically, Orange County National Golf Course behind me. We're here today for the Live Golf Tournament. Live Golf, very polarizing since its inception last year. Live funded by the Saudi group. And more importantly, in direct competition with PGA Tour. Live essentially stealing away lots of stars from the PGA Tour. Lots of complaints that these players have left the PGA Tour to join the Live Tour essentially for the money, when in reality, it's pro sports. It's all about the money for these guys. There certainly is a lot of hate, a lot of knocks against the Live Tour online, which by the way, Live essentially just stands for LIV, Roman numerals, 54. It's 54 holes to play in each of these tournaments, less than the PGA Tour. We're here today basically just take it all in, share it with you guys, give an honest representation of what attending one of these events is like. o'clock and the gates have opened. So one other big difference in the play for the Live Tour, in addition to winners for each of these tournament stops, players are also grouped onto these teams. The teams end up getting points, and at the end of the season, there'll be a team victory. All right, we've made it in. First thing, drink cuts. One of the other big differences is normally when you go to a golf course, completely quiet. For Live, it's all about being loud and having the music in the background. We're entering in at the eighth hole. Here's your safety disclaimer and your map. Be careful. And by the way, there is a shotgun start here, so every event starts at the same time and every event basically ends at the same time. Shotgun basically meaning that every group that's teeing off is teeing off at a different hole. So there really should not be any waiting behind other groups to tee off. So by the way, there are three courses at Orange County National Golf Course. The only course being played today is the Cricket Cat. You can play this. It's open to the public. Weekend greens fees are about $89. Similar to PGA Tour events, there are different upcharge seating packages that you can buy into, like the Gallery Club or Club 54. The hat stand outside. And directly across from hats is the putting green. Got the pros warming up here. If you don't want to stand and watch people practice, you can sit down on some of these seats. I actually kind of love this. It's a Zen Green. Let's see if you can sink a putt. You'll get tattoos. Airbrushed. They've got golf simulators going here. Everybody judge. Not too shabby. Face painting. Kids zone. Mad science in the house and they have show times as well for kids. This is crazy. Chipper Rooney. And then like beer pong, it's putt pong. And in the back they have food trucks, so chicken and waffles, fries, 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 and wraps, more concessions, Club 54 out here, more luxury viewing. Let's take a peek at some merch. It's all kinds of merch branded for the teams, basically polos and hoodies and towels. 
got Mickelson's team, the High Flyers. More hats. No, he's Ripper. Kim's All these hats. No crushers. So as far as merch goes, it was a swing and a miss. All bucket hats sold out for the day already. And all crushers hats sold out yesterday. I guess so much for there not being any demand for this. Coming up on the golf range. Players getting off and going to the range. Got players practicing chipping and coming out of the bunkers. Players hitting the long ball. All fan access. Go ahead on in or go up top. Maybe the most important thing we've seen so far today in the Fan Village. Refillable water, like Warp Tour. That's where the Hobbit lives. We're gonna start our day on hole seven. This is where Phil Mickelson will be teeing off first. Ice delivery, putting bags in those bunkers there. Phil Mickelson right there. He's looking great. Oh my god, they're playing my national anthem. Here comes the cavalry. Parachuters coming in. Disappearing into the tree. There it goes. Bill's getting ready to tee it off here. Yeah. Holy cow, he crushed it. Drop right. You don't want to be there. Nice. Let's go. I'm gonna follow Phil for a little bit. So we spoke to one of the heads of security before tee off. Today's attendance so far somewhere in a range of about 8,500 people. You can see Phil's ball on the green. Back to the eighth hole, par three. Closing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's not good in the middle of the run. So there is a considerable amount of people here. 
crowds just keep pouring in. Mm -hmm. The review so far. Not bad, a little hot. Very, hot. very tepid. Yes. Not enough drink vendors either. They should be hot. They should be more along the route. Players coming from nine over to ten in golf carts. Time for some refreshments. Still checking his notes. Looking at that yardage book. That's what I'm saying. Loving those shoes, bro. It's only two o'clock and these are lines for food. What limited offerings they have. You can see the leaderboard. Got TVs all around the course. We've moved up to hole one. Let's check out whoever's coming by here. There's the crew coming to the hole. After a brief gap, we have our next players at hole one. Kevin Nye in the house. He's teeing it first. Sounded rough. Not gonna lie. Oh, holy cow. Next up, Sergio and Bubba. Bubba Watson. Here we are, Sergio Garcia. You'd love to hate him. Yeah, Bubba. Bubba Watson in the house. Long, hard, and straight. Sergio Garcia. Mr. Watson. we get home you're welcome all right back home from the orlando stop on the live tour for 2023 just a couple final thoughts um it was a really fun time today and i like the spin that they put on the product uh with the teams i like the music that was playing it was really bizarre that the uh, folks are holding up signs that say shush and zip it um while there's music blasting in the background so uh, kind of a weird juxtaposition um i like the interactivity that they had displays and different things for people to do and um you know the players interacted with people as they're coming on and and getting off the tees and stuff very cool experience um super uh cheaper than going to pga stops um, but here's the cons going into the event the parking situation was abysmal and i spoke with a deputy on the way out I said, it's their first year and they'll get better. Apparently yesterday, uh, it was so difficult for cars to get in and out of the parking lot that they were stuck in the sand and then tow trucks were coming and then they got stuck in the sand as well. You had to go through this ridiculous snake path 
uh, with tons of like just sand. That's all it is. That's the that's Florida. Um, but today they had put down some uh, like plastic boards for you to get over some of the super sandy areas. But for the most part, if you had like a, a lower car, uh, you probably weren't getting to your parking spot the way that you needed to get to it. Um, it, that was just abysmal. The other thing that was kind of uh, really in need of improvement was the um, concessions. Not enough food, not enough drinks. And I don't know if that's because they planned for so fewer amount of people to show up, but then they had a bigger turnout than what they anticipated. But just overall, even if you had, um, and I think it was greater than 8,000 people that were there today, um, it, it felt you know, we've been to the Disney PGA stops before and some other PGA um, events. And the crowd size was, uh, the difference in the crowd size is negligible, I think. A lot of people are on the tee boxes, a lot of people are on the greens. Um, but having those a lot of people, not a lot of places to be able to get food or drinks, especially drinks. The only thing that was really to our benefit was that we brought that water bottle in and we were able to fill it up with the free water station. Other than that, if you wanted cocktails or you wanted um, soft drinks or anything, the lines were like 20, 30 minutes long, at, you know, at, at any given time, which, you know, it's taken away from the action. And it stands, the availability, really not there, right? The stands were, they had two stands in the um, kind of welcome pavilion and, and that's kind of it. And then the food trucks and concession stand, it, it's just not enough. There's a lot of room for improvement there. And I think if you're gonna look to grow the product or you're hoping to grow the product, should probably plan ahead for the amount of people that are going to show up for your event. I want to go back to the Saudi money and the outrage that people have about them forming a separate league. Um, it would be hypocritical for me to say that we didn't, that they needed a another golf league, right? Like the same way that I said, we went to the XFL game a couple weeks ago. I said, you don't need another football league. And especially with the XFL, at least they're playing in the off season of the NFL, not that the same players are playing, but here you have two competing leagues and the players have basically splintered off into two. I think it might send a message to PGA that if you were able to change things around, perhaps some of these players might come back or you might need to make that type of improvement to draw newer players in that are gonna change the game and, and move your product forward. Um, but um, the players that are over here in the live tournament, um, be it if they went for the money, more power to them. They're, in their, they're, they're playing the game of golf as a career to make money. Um, and if we're talking about Saudi money and we want to have the outrage of for Saudis, uh, which is fair, the Saudis also pump a ton of money into other companies here like Amazon, Google, Disney, Zoom, um, you know, you kind of name it. They've got their hands in a lot of the funding in it, in, a, in this country. So if you're going to be outraged about one thing, you should be outraged about all things and throw a boycott up about everything instead of just looking to try to boycott one product. But that's my feeling. Um, I would definitely go back to another one of these events. It was a lot of fun. The other thing that was a bummer was uh, souvenirs and things like you couldn't even buy the, the products to support the stuff that's being played out on the golf course. So the, the more popular teams, they didn't have hats, they didn't have shirts and so forth in the clubhouse for you to even buy, um, which is a good sign for them. I guess they ran out of things, but it's a bad thing that maybe they judged how many people would uh, be demanding product. But I am getting out of here now. Thanks a lot for coming along. Thank you very much for all of your likes, comments, and subscriptions. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Have a great night. See you guys.